Finally, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the B850 chipset and we're going to check everything out regarding the combination with AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D and compare it a bit with the X870 and X870E basically, uh, just to see how this one stacks up compared to that generation and uh, that chipset as well, which benefit do you get with this board which benefit you get with an x board and does it even make sense to go with this type of board when we're talking about the full gaming chip and everything all together so this is going to be of course a regular review and we're going to jump into the detail specs and everything all together regarding the uh, ASRock B850 Steel Legend Wi-Fi. Now, the visual aspect is literally the same comparing the X870 Steel Legend and the B850 Steel Legend, but there are some things that you might see different, uh, specifically in benchmarks, and some of them are affected with the GPU, and I do have to mention that, but some of them are affected with actually changing the chipset and everything all together. So let's quickly just jump through the specs and uh, to see what we have here on the IO ports, overview in general, and then some benchmarks. Supports a regular 9000, 8000 and 7000 series processor, AM, AM5 socket with chips at B850. We have 14 plus 2 plus 1 power phase design, Dr. Moss for V core. We have four DDR5 memory DIMMs uh, as per usual, and uh, one PCIe 5.0 times 16 and one PCIe 4.0 times 16, which is Quite solid. For the USB, we have one USB 3.2 generation 2 type 2 uh, type C front, four USB 3.2 generation 2, two rear type A and two rear type C, uh, seven USB 3.2 generation 1, three rear four front, eight USB 2.0, four rear two four front. For the graphic output, uh, and specifically if you go with CPU that has integrated GPU, you have HDMI. Now for the storage, four SATA 3 ports, one blazing M.2 PCIe Gen 5x4 and three Hyper M.2 PCIe Gen 4x4. For the audio, we have 7.1 channel HD audio Realtek ALC4082 audio codec and Himic audio Realtek 2.5G LAN and for VLAN we have uh, 802.11b Wi-Fi 7 plus Bluetooth standard form factor, we're talking about ATX. Now, for the I.O. overview, we have HDMI, two antenna ports, BIOS flashback, four USB 2.0, two USB 3.2 generation 2, two USB 3.2 generation 1, USB 3.2 generation 2 type C, 2.5G LAN, then we have one USB 3.2 generation 1 and one USB 3.2 generation 2 type C, microphone, out, and SPDIF. The cool thing about this board is, as I said, it resembles precisely with the X870 uh, Steel Legend Wi-Fi. We have tooless multi-layer M.2 heatsink, we have M.2 bottom heatsink as well, which is outstanding because it dissipates the heat more efficiently from the M.2 SSDs, uh, light release design, which is brilliant, and uh, exclusive uh, 20k caps. As they usually stated for the Steel uh, Legend motherboards, they are designed for durability uh, and um, quite nice aesthetics. I mean, I'm digging actually the full PCB uh, Y design, which is brilliant, and I don't have to go uh, more into details regarding the visual aspect. Uh, when we're talking about the 14 plus 2 plus 1 uh, VRMs, we have a 14 uh, V core phase, two uh, SOC phase, and one VCC MISC phase as well. Uh, eight layer PCB design, uh, DDR5, XMP, and Expo support, which basically for AMD, it supports up to 8000 megahertz, but as you know, for AMD, you go up to 6000 maximum, 6400, and that's it. For the M.2 solutions, we have quite uh, solid, I would say, uh, four uh, M.2 slots, and the first one is uh, Gen 5x4. Again, quite solid. Um, I don't have to actually go more into the, that, but we have XXL uh, M.2 heatsink on the first Gen 5x4, which is basically really needed, and I think even thicker one than this is needed for Gen 5, so yeah, that's uh, outstanding. Huge uh, VRM heatsinks, which will keep it down properly, but we're having 14 plus 2 plus 1, so that wouldn't be an issue. Now, we have Polychron Sync, and you know what I think about Polychron Sync in general, and uh, you know what I think about, in general, all of the motherboard softwares from all brands and what I favor. And I'm saying this because you know how much videos come out per year on this channel, and you know how much builds I do per year on this channel, and not to mention the ones that I do on the side. So, 
Polychron Sync sometimes works, sometimes doesn't regarding the synchronization with even their GPUs, but in general, it doesn't work with their RAMs. Well, not their RAMs, in general, RAMs. So I have here Kingston Fury Renegade RGB DDR5 2x16 at 6400 megahertz, and sometimes one works and the other one just stays in some default color, or it just goes blank, or it just... I don't know. And eventually after some time of restarts, it, it happens that it works. I just left it as it is because as you can see, this color is, I don't know, from some pass builds or whatever. And eventually if I go into Polychron Sync, the first one will change color to blue. The other one won't. Yeah. But uh, the good thing and what I found out just now or just recently is that they support Signal RGB, which unifies your RGB devices and offers outstanding customization in regarding of that. So I think skip Polychron Sync and go directly with this because it will definitely benefit you in terms of saving your nerves regarding the adjustment of the RGB. Unless you really want to go into RGB spectrum, then it doesn't matter if you haven't done anything until now or this is a fresh build you can just go with rgb spectrum and nothing will happen that's it so you don't even have to install polychron sync but in general i do have to point that out because it's just it should have been simple it isn't it continues to bug me and everybody else so yeah now for the benchmarks and we have loads of go loads of stuff to go through so let's go we start, of course, with AIDA64 system stability test with CPU going at 71 degrees. And I know in this scenario, I'm just going to mention the thermals just in this scenario because we have a Fantex Glacier ESKIT uh, custom water loop here with the 360 radiator and a D5 pump. But regardless of that, uh, clock speed went for, to 4950 megahertz. So in this scenario, it's quite all right. I do have to mention the whole configuration. So we're Rocking here the NV5 from Fantex, as you already know, Glacier is fit. Then we have the Zotac RTX uh, 4070 Ti Super. Then it's the motherboard you already know. We're having MD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D paired up with uh, Kings of Fury Renegade uh, DDR5 RGB 2x16 uh, gigs at 6400 megahertz and Kings of Fury Renegade Gen 4x4 4 4, 4 terabytes. Uh, and the system stability test, well, with this course, it's right in the middle, so that's quite solid and nothing to add here. The clock speed is definitely up, but I would say it's most likely because of the custom loop. That won't affect future results, and you'll see. I do 64 AES uh, 256, so cryptography. Uh, we're actually having a first place here with 375,681 megabytes per second which is outstanding, uh, but only by uh, 0 0.2. Still, it doesn't matter. It's uh, up on top. Then cache and system memory. So listen to this. You already know which RAMs we have. Read speeds go up to 59,292 megabytes per second. Write speeds 82,023 megabytes per second. Copy is 55,794 megabytes per second. Latency is 81.9. Copy last very low. Latency somewhere mid solid average, I would say read really low and write is just solid average as the latency as well so something is up here then we go in indigo benchmark uh, we have bedroom 2.911 million samples per second uh, where it's quite solid it's somewhere in the mid and the supercar is uh, 6.683 uh, million samples per second as well somewhere in the mid category and that's quite all right corona 10 8.187 million rays per second, which is best for all boards tested with 9800X 3D. Brilliant. Corona 1.3, 7.560 million rays per second, finished in 64 seconds, and it's quite solid performance. One second loss, but for some two second advantages when we compare uh, 9800X 3D. Cinebench R23, we have CPU going at 80 degrees, clock speed at 51, uh, 160 megahertz, which is great. But we have passes for 17, and that was at the end. Score was 21,013. That's 700 Cinebench points less than usual. And that was all for 10 minute test throttling. Now, single core uh, benchmark was uh, 2065, which is minimal difference and quite obvious and logical. And uh, now, Multi-thread score with 10 runs average is 21,568, which goes lower than the highest score in general, 
when we're talking about other 9800X 3Ds. 3D Mark CPU profile, and I would say mostly better, which is quite solid, and uh, that's outstanding actually. Then we go with Time Spy, Time Spy Extreme, Fire Strike, Fire Strike Extreme, and Fire Strike Ultra. Time Spy for combined and general score, we see the difference because of the GPU, but other very up and down. So when you take all of these numbers into consideration, the difference compared to the past 9800X3D is mainly, the, the bigger difference is mainly because of the GPU difference. So in other benchmarks, I had a 4080 Super, here we have 4070 Ti Super. And then you just take a look at those CPU numbers and you'll see it varies. It goes up and down and it depends on the run. Then we go with Geekbench 6. So single is 3257 and multi is 18,351. What we get here is multi score is the best score that we got so far with 9800X3D. And then the single goes behind the best score. So it's okay. I would say it's okay. PC Mark 10. Now I won't go into these numbers because you can see them in graph, but best overall score, but in the individual run, exchanges the first position for the best result of 9800X3D, which is brilliant. Still, it kind of varies, but then again, you'll be thinking why, regardless. Yes, SSD, you already know which, which SSD. Read speeds, uh, 6072.25 megabits per second. Write speeds, 5977.60 megabits per second. I would say an average again. Add to this benchmark read speeds, uh, 6.88 gigabytes per second, while the write speed 6.44 gigabytes per second. Also going in average, uh, somewhere in the mid tier. And the crystal uh, disk mark read speeds go up to 7351.48 megabytes per second, which really goes up high and write speed 6896.87. Again, really outstanding scores. Jetstream 2 web browsing, 305.138, and uh, that's brilliant. Now, as I did for the past benchmarks uh, regarding the motherboards and the CPUs, I went with EaseBench Unreal Engine 5.1.1. Uh, we have GPU particle and photogrammetry. Uh, it's lower. In some instances, it's lower because of the GPU. And it, you can see the difference. It's quite obvious that we're having loads of FPS drops but this can definitely be impacted from the GPU. I can't give it a direct comparison for the past benchmarks, but what you can get is a comparison with 9800X3D and 4070 Ti Super. So gives you some idea if you go with that, how much loss will it get compared to the 4080 Super. In general, what I can say, and I think it's time to conclude because you're getting loads of numbers quite quickly. And honestly, I don't want this video to wrap up up to 15, 20 minutes. But in general, what you get with this board is definitely lower performance than the X870. Not that drastical, but taking into consideration that in general, I use the same SSD, same RAMs. In this scenario, I went with a different GPU. And that is visible with the benchmarks that are using actually the GPU. So in 3D Mark, Time Spy, and all the others. But in those instances, you can see the difference with the CPU. And in some benchmarks, you actually see that in general, mostly goes below, below the X870. So we're having a lower grade motherboard, which was expected. It's not something like we had with, um, what was that, uh, X570 and B550, where the B550 was insane. You remember I was using B550 Tai Chi for quite some time, and that was my board to go. And uh, right here we have a different story because we have much lower price and the price, I mean, check this out. So in Croatia, it's 269 euros. You can get it lowest at 258, right? In Germany or in general in Europe, you can get it for 230 euros, which is much better. But unfortunately shipping to Croatia is another 15 to 30 euros. So it kind of levels up. But then again, we go to US and on Amazon in US, you get it for $169. That's the lowest I found. When we go to New Egg, it's around $200. Still way, way cheaper. And I'm really not enjoying the prices in Croatia, definitely. In Europe, Germany, that, that's quite solid, as per usual. But uh, if you have an option, buy that in Germany. If you're watching from Croatia, if you're watching 
from US, then I mean, that's an outstanding price uh, without a doubt. I mean, you'll definitely benefit if you go with a lower tier processor in terms of getting some sort of a mid range combination, because this processor is 600 euros, $600 or whatever. And you know, the price of 9800X3D, I don't know if it changed in the last couple of days or this week, but in general, that's the whole cause. So what I would say is this board is a solid mid tier board. But when we're talking about in general visuals, uh, if you go with full white build, and as you can see right here for this example, it looks brilliant. It looks brilliant, but looks don't sell well in most of the time in this scenario, actually. So yeah, guys, uh, this is it. This was SRB 850 Steel Legend Wi-Fi. If you liked the video, if it, this helped you, gave an idea and shine a light on this board and in general, the whole benchmark uh, idea, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell, and I'll see you tomorrow in another one. Bye-bye.